Okay, we are going to differentiate these two expressions. The first one is that ln of x times square root of x squared plus 1, and the second one is ln of x plus square root of x squared plus 1. Notice that how similar these two are, right? But you see that this right here is actually x times square root of x squared plus 1, but here we will have the plus in between instead. So, in fact, we can actually use the log property to break this down first. Unfortunately, we cannot do the same thing for the second one though. But anyway, when we have a product inside, it's the same as the sum of two logs, right? And this is the natural log, of course. So, we can write this down as ln of x, and then we add it with the second part is the ln again, with this inside, which is the square root of x squared plus 1, all right? And the truth is that we can even simplify this more, especially for the square root. In calculus, you almost always look at the square root as an exponent. We know that this square root, it's the same as 1 half power, right? So let me just write this down again. The first one stays the same, ln of x, and then we add it with, this is ln, and for this square root, let's write it down as parentheses, and the inside is x squared plus 1, and then raise that to the 1 half power like this, right? Okay, this is the power now inside of the ln, and this is just a logarithm. We can take the power to the front, but do not subtract 1, because this is not differentiation. We are just trying to do the algebra. This is just the natural log property, okay? So we can write this down as ln x plus 1 half ln of this inside x squared plus 1. So in another word, the original expression is nothing but just this now. And then we can look at this and differentiate. This is easier because we don't have to do the product rule, right? So we can just go ahead and differentiate this. So I'll put a y prime for the derivative of this. The derivative of ln x is simply just 1 of x. And we are done for the first part. And then we add it with the second part. Well, the 1 half is now a constant multiple, so I will just write this down. We keep the constant multiple first. And then we differentiate ln of x squared plus 1. The derivative of this is first, you do 1 over the inside, so it's 1 over x squared plus 1. And then for the inside, because of the chain rule, you have to differentiate the inside and multiply that right here. The derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x, so you multiply. So this right here is the expression, and the rest is just you combine the fractions and simplify the expressions. So this part, we see that the 2's cancel out, and we will have 1 over x. And then we add it with, let's put the x on the top, because it's 1 times 1 times x, right? So it's x over x squared plus 1. So this is pretty much it, but if you want to really combine the fractions, notice that the denominator for the first one is x, and the denominator for the second one is x squared plus 1, right? So let's just go ahead and multiply the first one by x squared plus 1 on the bottom and also on the top. And then for the second one, let's multiply the bottom by that x and do the same thing on the top. So we see this top is just x squared plus 1 after you multiply this out. And then we add it with x times x, which is x squared. And because the denominators are the same now, we can put it together all over x times x squared plus 1, like this. So in the end, we can just go ahead and do this plus that. So we have 2x squared plus 1 over that. So over x times x squared plus 1. And this right here is the answer for the first one. And now let's take a look at the second one. Unfortunately, when we have addition of two things inside of the ln, there's no such property that we can break this apart. So to differentiate this guy, we just have to deal with it. That's how it is, okay? So this is going to be mainly like the chain rule question, and we'll just go ahead and proceed. Y prime for the derivative. Differentiating ln, we know it's going to be first 1 over the inside, which is just the x plus square root of x squared plus 1. But the chain rule says we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So 
This right here has two terms, right? Be sure you open the parentheses first, and then we put down the derivative of the inside right here. Okay, the derivative of x is what? It's just 1, right? And then we add it with the derivative of the square root of something. So how do we do that? Well, the derivative of square root of something is first 1 over 2 square root of the inside, okay? So we have 1 over 2 square root of x squared plus 1. And notice that the x squared plus 1 inside of the square root, it also needs the chain rule, right? We multiply by the derivative of this, which is multiplied by 2x. Derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x. And this is it. This right here is the inside derivative for that, okay? And now we will just try to simplify this a little bit more. For the first part, it's just 1 over x plus square root of x squared plus 1. And for the second part, hmm, we see that we can cancel the x. That's, I mean, we can cancel the 2, so that's good. And it looks like we have 1 plus this over that, right? x over square root of x squared plus 1, like this. And is there anything else that we can do? Well, this is the usual deal. If you look at this is something plus a fraction, why don't we just combine the fractions together? And to do so, let me just go ahead and put this down as 1 over 1, and we multiply the top and bottom by this. So the inside will have the same denominator. So let's go ahead and multiply by square root of x squared plus 1 on the bottom and also on the top, like that. And then we'll see that this is equal to 1 over, this still stays the same. And then we multiply, now the bottom are the same, we can just keep it as square root of x squared plus 1. And then on the top, this is 1 times this, which is just square root of x squared plus 1. And we add it with this x, right? Okay, and now what? Notice, this is what? This is x plus square root of x squared plus 1. And that's exactly the same as this. And of course, when we're adding, the order doesn't matter. So in another word, we can cancel this and that together, right? Because we have this fraction times that now. So in the end, we have just 1 on the top over square root of x squared plus 1 like this for the derivative of that, right? So as you can see, these two questions, they originally look really similar, but the work are you know, pretty different. And you can leave a comment down below and let me know which one do you like more, right? And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. I like to do this kind of videos for all my students and for you guys as well. Anyway, that's it.